Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Would you like even more content? Here's my Patreon. Now onto the stories. Case file number 991, written by Trigonometry. All of my coworkers randomly despawned. I work at a distribution center slash packing plant for an advertising company. Basically, it means I stand at a table and pack boxes full of paper all day, printing the shipping labels and stuff like that. It's a decent job, and I like my coworkers, so it's not really as boring as it sounds. The warehouse is about 2,000 square feet and is more or less a giant cinder block rectangle. There are very few windows. There's an office type area along the eastern side, contains the break room, unisex bathroom, a cubicle for our IT guy, and nothing else. And the stacks where we park the forklift and pallet jacks are on the west side. The stacks are all either short enough to see over or empty enough to see through. The rest of the warehouse floor is visible open space with the receiving bay, garage where the FedEx trucks come in, on the north end, and my station on the south end. I have five co-workers. I'll call them Mary, Josh, Matt, Alex, and Joe. Mary works at a station next to me, building the kits and packing the boxes. Josh and Matt work in the stacks, scanning out materials for Mary and I to pack. Alex is the aforementioned IT guy. Joe's the floor manager and my direct boss. One of the perks of my job is that since the work is kind of mindless and nobody really talks to me, they're all older than me by a significant amount. I get to listen to music while I work. I have a kind of irritating and loud taste, so I wear a pair of earbuds to listen. Also because Joe keeps sports talk radio on all day on the floor, but whatever. A couple of weeks ago, I was at my station, standing facing south. I was pre-building some boxes for a packing order we were going to have coming in later that week, so I had my music up a little louder than usual to cover up the sound of the tape gun. I could see Mary out of the corner of my eye, working on something at the next station, and whenever I lifted my head, I could see both Josh and Matt in the stacks with their scanner guns and carts. Alex was in his office as far as I knew, and I couldn't see Joe. I built another stack of ten or so boxes, took me maybe six or seven minutes, before leaving to use the bathroom. I went into the little office space and noticed that Alex wasn't there, but wasn't really focused on it. I entered the bathroom, did my thing, and left. When I got out of the bathroom, Alex was still gone. I didn't think much of it. I knew he couldn't be in the bathroom since I would have seen him come in, but I guess I assumed he'd gone out under the floor to ask someone a question or something. The office space where the bathroom is is so small that you can see all of it from the entrance, so he couldn't have been in there without me seeing him. I walked out of the office back to my station and picked up my stuff to get back to work when I noticed that Mary was also gone, along with her water bottle and the roll of label stickers she'd been using. I looked around towards the stacks for Matt and Josh. They're both over six feet tall and incredibly easily visible, normally, but I couldn't see them or their carts. I took off my earbuds and noticed that the warehouse was completely silent. No delivery trucks idling in the receiving bay, no rumble of cartwheels or footsteps on the concrete, and even my boss's radio was turned off. I left my station and walked across the floor, the motion activated lights turning back on as I went, trying to look closer into the stacks to see if they were just out of view, but like I said, the warehouse isn't that big and they just weren't there. I never saw Mary, Alex, or Joe either nor any of their stuff, the scanner guns or carts or label stickers. It was just like I'd imagined them all being at work today. I left the stacks and checked out the receiving bay. Nothing, and none of the garage doors were open. Break room, also nothing. It was around 3 p.m. now. Everyone eats around noon, and we all clock out at 4. So they hadn't all somehow gone for lunch without me noticing. By this point, I'd done a complete loop of the entire warehouse, outright calling out for people as I went, and all my coworkers just seemed to have fallen off the face of the earth. Obviously, I was creeped out, but I'd have been leaving in less than an hour anyway, so I just kind of got back to work. I put my music back on and went back to building boxes, turned my music up loud just to have the noise. It felt like the sound of my tape gun was the only thing on the planet. 
I kept an eye on my watch and eventually, after around 25 minutes, I finally noticed movement in the corner of my eye and looked up to see Mary at her station, working on her label stickers like she'd never left. I turned to face the stacks and saw Matt and Josh with their carts, right where they were before I'd gone into the office. Nobody looked like they'd spent the last half hour working, but they also didn't look like they'd actually gone anywhere either. I didn't say anything about it. I just spent the last dregs of my shift with a weird feeling at the back of my neck. Eventually, 4 o'clock rolled around and I clocked out and left. I told all this to my stepdad on the way home. He works at the corporate office of the ad agency that owns the warehouse a couple streets down and he said he couldn't think of any reason for anyone to just up and leave like that. It hasn't happened since at work or otherwise. I do keep my music volume a little lower while I work though. I can't help but wonder if something happened and I just couldn't hear it. Case notes for file 991. All of my coworkers randomly despawned. My guess, you suffered from random death for some reason. People are just randomly dying these days. Or it could just be an accident in the warehouse itself. Whatever the reason, I think you randomly died and then your soul was zipping across to a new universe. But in that space between death transportation to the new universe, there's a gap between it. It may be related to how distant the new universe is, is going to be. Maybe you die in most universes near nearby, so the one you have to occupy in quantum immortality is far away. Because there's so many copies, eventually there is one where you don't die for whatever reason. You know, if it's a cause that just happens like through genetics, where it's a genetic cancer, for an example. Maybe in almost every universe you do die from that, but there's still thousands if not millions or billions because there's so many copies of universes out there it's hard to describe. So there's still plenty where you aren't dead, they just may be far away. And I think in those cases, there's a buffer period where a temporary server has to be created that has no people in it, just the copied physical matter. And that's where you inhabit until your soul finishes the move over. Think of copying data to a uh, USB drive. It depends on the size and also how far of a distance you're, you have to bring the data. There's still a lag in transportation. You copy it to the thumb drive and then you still have to bring it to the other computer. I think it's very similar to that, as a simple analogy. And you're definitely not alone in this. There's plenty of people reporting unoccupied servers. Worlds where they just can't find anyone. And colors are muted, sounds are muted, Every just everything doesn't quite feel right because it isn't. You aren't in the real world. You're in a facsimile, temporarily, during the transition. I do wonder if you've noticed anything unusual in the behavior of other people or if things are out of place after this event. That would be a sign, a clear sign, that you are in a new universe. Especially if you're very far away from your original one, there would be presumably more difference. Case file number 992, written by Dear Maria, The Mysterious Case of Missing Tamale. So last week, I was home alone for a few days and went to get some tamales and a pupusa from an El Salvadorian place down the road. I ordered two tamales and one pupusa. I sat my food down, opened the bag, and got up to get a plate. I finished one tamale and the pupusa. When I was done, I went to get the other tamale from the bag to put it in the fridge, but it was nowhere to be found. I know I had two because they fell out of the package they were in and I put them back in there before I ate the first one. I searched every single corner of my tiny house, even in rooms I didn't go in. I looked under the table, under the couch, nothing. I don't think one of my pets snuck off with it either because I would have found the tinfoil in their wake. I have no clue where it went and I think I would have smelled it by now if it was hidden somewhere. It simply disappeared. So strange. Case notes are file 992, the mysterious case of the missing tamale. So my first thought here was similar to other commenters in the thread, in that you may just have been eating on autopilot, and sometimes we do that. We do a lot of things on autopilot, obviously we don't really think about eating, we don't really think about breathing or swallowing or any of that automatic actions, functions. Now this would fit if there was a wrapper for the second one, but in the comments you specify that there was no tinfoil anywhere, not in the trash, nowhere, so if you did autopilot eat it, there would still be the wrapper for it, and likewise your dog didn't, because you would have the tinfoil strewn about the entire floor like debris from a plane crash. I may have some experience in that regard. 
Mr. Ben just eats anything. I have to keep it closely guarded. So if it wasn't autopilot, this would probably just be a classic case of DOP, disappearing object phenomena. It doesn't seem to affect food very often, but there is one other account, fairly recently, I think maybe a month ago I read, where the person was eating food at the kitchen table that their aunt had just made for them, and they ate it, the plate was empty, they looked away, and then they looked back and it was full again. I think they were tacos or burritos or something like that, maybe quesadillas. Yeah, quesadillas I think it was. Anyways, they kept eating it, looking away, and they were replenishing them themselves on the plate, like a <laughs> Harry Potter elves magic making food appear if the food was vanishing from their stomach, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't because you would feel that. You would feel being full and then not full. You know, that's an obvious sensation difference. So then the only thing I can speculate is that in different copies of different universes for that person, the person there was going to eat the quesadillas and for them it just vanished. So I think in this case you were on the receiving end of a glitch like this where the food was disappearing for you and maybe in a different universe a copy of you there was receiving extra tamales. So they had three instead of two. Lucky them, huh? <laughs> you suffered a great loss, I must admit. And now time for the story of the day. Once upon a time, a group of ants worked tirelessly every day to collect food for their colony. One lazy grasshopper spent his days singing and dancing instead. When winter arrived, the ants were prepared with plenty of food stored away. The grasshopper, on the other hand, had nothing. This one's very short, but I think it's very potent too. It simply signifies that hard work pays off. We all exist in reality, and we all have to produce for ourselves. Obviously, we need to care for each other, but, but it's a cooperative, right? We need to produce and fend for ourselves in some respects, and earn our keep, I guess is the best way to say it. So in short, if you want something, go out and work for it. It feels better that way anyways. Like the video, subscribe, you know the deal. Kinetic Symphony, signing off.